few weeks ago, the book of Philemon. Philemon is a small book, but Philemon, I trust, has a very significant message for us as a church. In our entrance hall now, we have the words, welcome. It's a nice display on the notice board. In our rear hall, on the notice board, we have the words, welcome. Question I ask us today then, brothers and sisters, is are we a wrong seal church? Now, what does that mean? Well, some of us will remember the advert for Ron Seal paint and such products. And their slogan was, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Does Felton Evangelical Church do exactly what it says on the tin? Two notices say, Welcome. The question I have for us uh, this morning time then is, are we a warm and welcoming church? Do you find Feltham Evangelical Church to be a warm and welcoming place? It should be because we are a Christian church. And in Christ, there is a warm welcome with God, from God, and as those who are in Christ, we should reflect that. Warm and welcoming. Previously, in sin, there's rejection, there's rebellion, and the message was towards us from God, was keep away, no entry. Because of our sin, we stand under the judgment and rejection of God. But now in Christ, who gave himself on the cross for our sins to open up the way, to smash the barrier, as it were, through his resurrection power, there is a message now that comes and says, welcome, come on in. Everything has changed. Christ Jesus makes all the difference. Now we stand as a people, as Christian people, who stand together as those who know the welcome of God. We share that together. So we come to the book of Philemon. And as we look at these first seven verses, I think we can say that there is some warmth and some welcome in them. There is a true fellowship expressed in those first seven verses and experience between some Christian people, specifically between Paul and Philemon himself and at the heart of it is Christ Jesus verse 1 Paul a prisoner for Christ Jesus verse 3 we read of grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and then in verse 5 we will read about faith and love toward the Lord Jesus and then we'll read in verse 6 that there is to be a full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. The center of a warm, welcoming relationship experience is the Lord Jesus Christ. The more the Lord Jesus Christ is known in our lives and in this church, in truth and in reality, the more we will be warm and welcoming in a true, proper and honest way. So let's go into our passage. And I just 
I want to look at four points this morning, and I want to look first of all at a warmth observed, a warmth observed, looking at the verses one and two here, a warmth observed. Let's read the verses. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Apia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Let's think, first of all, then, of, uh, of Paul here. He's a prisoner of Jesus Christ, or he is a prisoner for Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, it says there at the beginning of verse one. So what are Paul's circumstances like? He's in prison. Uh, they're not great, are they? Uh, generally, we don't relish being in prison. Prisons can vary in their, in their experience, but generally, we don't want to be in prison, do we? Yeah? As a general rule, it's not a place where you uh, desire to be. But everything changes for Paul because he's there for Jesus Christ. He's there for Christ Jesus. He's not there for any accidental reason. Most people would get quite angry or quite upset, quite annoyed about being in prison. But Paul accepts his situation as the appointment of Christ Jesus and that he is there to be a witness for Christ Jesus. You see, it changes his attitude that he's not a miserable and a, a, a grim and bitter person. He is a person who is showing love and affection and enjoying the delight of fellow Christians in his own heart. So I give you all a challenge and give myself a challenge. What about your situation? You might think um, it's not as good as I would like it to be. Uh, your marriage might not be as good as you like it to be. Some of you are stuck in a hotel in this country and you might not want to be there at all. You want your situation to change. But Paul would remind us that wherever we're found, according to the arrangement of God, remember if you're a true Christian submitting to God, then it's for Jesus Christ. You're there in that situation for him. That makes everything different. Ten, to know that he has ordered and arranged everything. You can live in an optimistic and loving way from that situation. So Paul has got an outgoing heart. Not a closed heart, but he's got warmth coming out of his heart towards, well, we've got some other people here, haven't we? First of all, we got Timothy. Timothy's with him and he's a brother. So we're thinking about, we're observing this war that's coming first from Paul, and then he's, there's a family relationship uh, with Timothy. He's a brother in Christ. Remember, as the church of God, we are a family, we are brothers and sisters uh, together. And to Philemon there, who's a beloved fellow Worker, dear friendship, closeness, affection, engaging in the work of God together, knowing that we are serving the same God and we're involved in the same work. And then there's a sister here, dear Afia. Some suggest that she may well be Philemon's wife, as you precisely said, but we could think that that's very possibly the case. And then, dear Archippus. He's a fellow soldier. He could be the son of Philemon and Athia. But there's this, this warmth again. He, we're in the same battle together. This world is against us. Sin is against us. The devil is against us. We need soldiers who will rise up. Who will be strong for the Lord. And Archippus, perhaps using his youthful energy. And he is... Joining in the work of the Lord, I might say to you younger ones, rise up and join in the great army of God to take forward the cause of God. But it's all, they're all together, they're sharing this relationship. And then there's a church that is in Philemon's house in the early days of the church. Uh, churches often met in homes, presumably 
in Colossae, that's where we are here, Colossae, the same book that the book of Colossians was written to, um, perhaps Philemon had the, the largest uh, house, and he had room for the church. Well, that reminds us as well, doesn't it? An open heartedness by Philemon. He didn't say, well, you're not going to come here and have church here and make a mess of my house. You go and get somebody else's house. No, he's open hearted. He's got a, he's embracing church. Come and meet in my place. My place is at the disposal of God and in his people. My resources are for God and for his people. There's an openness to welcome the church into his house. Very likely uh, with Aphia and Archippus as well in the family uh, doing the welcoming. And so, well, there's a challenge there, isn't it, to open up our own homes for the cause of God. There's a challenge to give our own resources as we're having this giving day for the work of God here, specifically the building project, thinking of what we can do as, as we're open-hearted and to give for the Lord's cause. So what I want to start off with, I just feel there's a good deal of warmth going on here. There's a, just a good deal of, of, of welcome and uh, appreciation of one another and just enjoying being together. And in this sense, in, the, in, in that sense, there's a little taste of what a church should be. Brothers and sisters together, workers together, soldiers together. Not, not embittered by our circumstances, generous. Here we are. We can observe this warmth, and we're thinking, is this, a, is this something that we might say we reflect as a church? We should be reflecting as a church. Let's go to our second point then in verse three. is the source of the warmth or warmth. So, we don't think about it so much in uh, the middle of July, do we? Uh, but come December, uh, God willing, and uh, your heating breaks down, you'll be thinking, well, uh, we need a good source for our heat. So we get cold. Well, where's it coming from then? If you, you, you get a flavor of verses one and two, you might think, well, we don't see a great deal of that around. We see a lot of selfishness. We see a lot of people uh, against other people. Well, well, where does it come from, man? Where did you get this warmth from? Am I just going to tell you, hey, Bob, everybody, just heat up, just, just get a bit of warmth and show a bit of love? No, there's a source for this, and the source is in verse 3. There's a flow of grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This comes from God. There's a grace, okay? There's appreciation, a reality of knowing the goodness of God flowing into our lives. The, the barrier of sin has been demolished in the cross of Jesus Christ, and now we can come before God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and know the flow of his goodness to those who don't deserve it. Oh, as we study the word, as we pray to him, we can know this flow from our God and from our Lord Jesus. And we can know this peace in our lives. It's the order here. The whole world is looking for peace. Peace in Ukraine. Peace in Myanmar. Peace wherever the problem is. There's no grace. <laughs> That's where you want our peace. Grace and peace. Peace is that happiness of soul, that contentment of soul that comes knowing that we're accepted by God and his favor is upon us. And it comes from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice they're on a level here, one of those great indications of the Lord Jesus Christ being truly God. And from them both, there comes this beautiful grace and peace flowing. No technical point there. The you in verse three is actually plural. So this is the church that Paul is writing to. The church in Colossae there. He's saying, have this, have this experience among you. 
That's a challenge to me individually, you see, what I bring into the church at Belton. It's, you know, we can start and say, well, if, you know, if, if she got our act together, we'd have a bit more warmth here. And that brother, he's messed up at the moment. If he got his act together, then the place would be a bit of a happier place. And we can start looking around the church and everybody else is the problem rather than... What about me? What am I doing? How much am I knowing the grace and peace? You see, the church isn't made up of numbers. It's made up of people, real people. And a warm and welcoming church comes with real, warm and welcoming people. <laughs> and you become a warm and welcoming person when you're really just knowing the grace and peace of God. It's, it's that reminder, even as we had in our service today. It's amazing. God has received me in Christ. God has, Jesus has died for me, and I want more of this in the midst of my life. Saying that life is easy at times, it can be really tough, but as even we thought about the children's talk, bring the Lord Jesus in, bring him in, and see what will happen. Ties in. Church is really devoted. To God. So we, what, what, what I'm di driving into then in, in verse 2 is, we've observed this world, but we think that's, that looks pretty. That looks like it's really good to have some of that stuff around in verses 1 and 2. And in verse 3, we'll see where it comes from. We see where the, we might say, we see where the heater is. Where the heater is. And it's flowing from God. We believe in God. God of all grace. God who brings peace by that grace. Well, let's think then in, uh, in our third point, which takes us to verses four to six, is, uh, is the flowing of the warmth. Flowing of the warmth. Um, in verses four to seven, we're back specifically in Paul's relationship with Timothy and the affection and love uh, that, that, are, that there is between them, and particularly as Paul appreciates all of the warmth and welcoming nature of Philemon's character. So I'll, I'll read verses four to six, and uh, just to get a sense of this, this warmth flowing, uh, here's Paul, he says, I thank my God always when I remember you, as he thinks of Philemon. I thank my God always when I remember you and my prayers, because I hear of your love, you know, the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. And, and so the, the, the heat is flowing here. It, it's really on the move. And it's on the move Yes, in this relationship between Paul and Philemon, but in Philemon's life himself and the impact that he is having. So let's think something about that flow. Well, there's some prayer going on here, isn't there? There's some prayer and thanksgivings. Prayer and thanksgivings. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. Paul remembers Philemon and thanks God. Paul prays for Philemon, and as he's praying, he's thanking God, thanking God for him, thanking God for what is happening in his life. Well, it's a good thing to be reminded of for ourselves again this morning, isn't it? As a church, uh, the warmth and the welcome will be flowing when we're praying for each other. We're about 34 members now, I think. I'm challenged again myself how much I'm giving thanks and praying for all the others who are the committed members of Felton Evangelical Church. And I challenge each of us to be praying and giving thanks for one another. Thanking God for the work. Thanking God for saving such and such a person in the church. But the flow of these thanksgivings and prayers is, is because of certain stuff that is happening in Philemon's life, because, verse 5, I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus. It's an ongoing thing. Christianity is not just that we believe in Jesus Christ, that we twiddle our thumbs and say, await for heaven. You know, it's not just sort of, a, well, I'm saved now, 
I'm just going to do what I want. Christianity is about experiencing the life of God. It's about trusting him continually in every and each circumstance of life and every each day of life. We're trusting him. We're having faith, continually trusting him. I'm trusting him for my children. I'm trusting him for everything. I'm trusting him for my church. So here we are, you see. Here is that. Uh, there's love and faith that Tapai Lehman has towards the Lord Jesus. Seen in his life that he loves the Lord Jesus and that he's trusting him. You know, people who are trusting in the Lord Jesus and loving him, I think you can probably get a sense of the difference between somebody who's doing that and somebody who's not doing that by their attitude to life. Somebody who's doing that, there's a, there's a positivity. You know, I've got to say he's in control of everything. I'm not sure about all the details of my life, but I know he's there and I, I can trust him. And there's an optimism to life. For those who closed off their love and faith in the Lord Jesus, there's a general pessimism, a general negativity, a general selfishness. And so fellow believers, I'm encouraging us again to love the Lord Jesus, to be passionately devoted to him. And if you love the Lord Jesus, it'll be shown in what he says. You love somebody, do what they say. Learn his word. Keep trusting him, Lord. I don't understand all my life, but I'm trusting you. So we see here there's prayer, there's thanksgiving, there's faith, and there's love. And then we hit a point which is a little bit, uh, we could be a bit unsure about, but I want us to be able to make certain about it as we read all of verse five. It says, because I hear of your love, and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus. Yeah, we're okay with that so far. We can understand that. It's the next bit that can be a bit troubling when it says, and for all the saints. And for all the saints. Well, if you read the sentence, it basically means he's got love and faith for all. He's got love for and faith in all the saints. Not just in the Lord Jesus, but in all the saints. So there is... An outgoing heart towards the people of God. They go together, you see. If you love God, you love the Lord Jesus, and you're trusting him, then there's an outgoing heart to the people of God. You say, I, I, I want to love these people because they belong to Jesus Christ. They're saints, you see. What's a saint? What's a saint? A saint is a Christian. Somebody who's committed to God. Yeah? Not a special person or whatever or on a, some design or he's a christian so here is philemon and he loves christians he loves those who are devoted to god and he trusts them he trusts them sometimes we hear people say you can't trust anybody nowadays people are deceptive liars untrustworthy well in the church it should be different we should all have, we should have a character whereby we can trust people. And so Philemon has this outgoing heart and he's, and, and he's wanting to trust. He's wanting to, he, he, he's wanting to trust the people of God. His heart is towards them. His heart is to embrace them. His heart is to help them. That's the character of Philemon's life. See, some of us say, well, I'm not going to get involved in anybody, anybody's life. And we say, why won't I do it? I might get hurt. I might get hurt. Okay? But love says, you're the Lord's. And I want the best for you. And, and okay, I may make myself vulnerable. It may, it, it could may lead me to problems, but I, I, I just want to bless you. I just want to see good in your life because you are a fellow believer. I encourage us to think more and more about this, brothers and sisters, to not have a, a hard heart that withdraws and keeps people at arm's length and says, I'm not going to trust anybody because I might get hurt. It's a heart rather that's open with the love of God and loves other Christians and says, well, how can I help them? How can I do good to them? And I'm going to I'm going to commit myself to them. So I want to embrace 
Is it somebody you're struggling with in the church and you really need to think about how that is worked out? Pray about that. Because it's the call of God, this outgoing, flowing, warm, and welcome that is in the heart of Philemon. And Paul is loving it. And we come into verse 6. He says, I pray for the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. Now, I think that's building on this whole outgoing heart to other Christians. Here is the sharing. The idea is the sharing is the, is the enjoying together of that which belongs to God. We're enjoying together that which belongs to God. We're sharing the same interests. We're speaking of the word of God together. We're speaking of the work of God together. We're interested in each other's welfare. We are a people who, who, who worship together. We are a people who, who serve God together. We're a people who support each other because we're in the fellowship of God. We're embraced by the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's as if Paul said, I want this more to flow. I want it to be flowing more and more. This sharing that comes through your faith, the sharing that is, is it comes about because we all have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. It becomes more effective for the full knowledge of every good, good thing. So we're growing together. It's as, as if we're becoming more aware of God. We're becoming more impacted by God. And it's this open-heartedness towards others as we're embracing each other and we're growing together. Growing together in the knowledge of every good thing that's in us for the sake of Christ. All these things that we have as Christians are being enjoined. And they're being, and they're growing, they're expanding as we use them and interact together concerning them. It's all the same, Christ. And so it, it, it's just this whole sense, you see, of things being operating, of affection, of love, of celebrating everything concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. That we enjoy it together. And obviously it means a closeness, isn't it? Spending time together, concerned for one another, using WhatsApp groups, all these things to, to build ourselves up in the knowledge and appreciation of that great fellowship, that great sharing we have been uh, brought into. So that's verses 6 to uh, verses 4 to 6. And amid some of the perhaps the complex details there, I just want the, the sense of this, this flow of warmth and welcome that is being seen in Timothy, in Philemon's life, as he engages with other Christians and the life of the Lord Jesus flows through him. Finally, I want to come to the warm experience in verse 7. The warm experience in verse 7. Let's read. For I have delivered, I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. There's Timothy, there's Paul rather, saying concerning Philemon, I've been really encouraged. I have been really brought to have much joy and comfort because I've I, I, I heard of you. I know of you, dear Philemon, my brother, that the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. What does this mean? Well, the church there at Colossae, Philemon is known as a brother who encourages people. He's known as a brother who helps people to move forward in their faith in Christ. This word refresh, what is it? What is it to be refreshed? 
Well, July has not has been as hot as this time last year, but if it was this time last year and you got a nice glass of water even in the middle of the day, you would say, that's great. That's refreshing. That's refreshing. Because you feel parched. You feel, uh, you feel as though you just need something to brighten you up because you're so thirsty. Well, in the way of this world, which doesn't offer us a great deal of encouragement, uh, the normal ways of this world is not to encourage Christians and to go in the way of righteousness, and it's completely the other direction. You feel a drain, exhausted by the people of this world. Here is Philemon, and you don't feel drained and exhausted by him. You feel encouraged. You feel he refreshes you. You feel he's just got that manner of life and the words that he speaks that encourage you to keep going and following the way of God. And he brings refreshment to your soul. That was, that's what was happening as his life was impacting his life and others. It's his love, his desire for other Christians. And they were being refreshed. So, brothers and sisters, are we refreshers? Are we refreshers? It was a sweet, I don't know whether it's still around, called refreshers, isn't it? Uh, but are you a refresher? Somebody mentions my name or your name with one of the things that comes to mind, but, oh, I feel they really refreshed me. They've done me a lot of good. They really encouraged me in their lives. Or would they say, well... Oh, he's a real misery. I don't want to be around him. You just feel depressed after being with him. See, here is these people were experiencing a war, a war coming through Philemon. I trust we have a lot of refreshers. I know we have a good number of refreshers that felt me on Jolly the Church, and we praise God for that. But let's go more into the refreshing business like Theo Philemon was. So let's draw things to a conclusion now. And I, I, I trust you, you've been with my flow here, and it's all about the warmth of the Christian family as it's experienced, particularly between Paul and Philemon. But as that expands and impacts others as well, healthy Christian living spreads a warmth and a welcome into the lives of others. And so how are we? Well, to the evangelical church, how are we with regard to being warm and welcoming? I just want to make it clear as we draw towards conclusion that, as I've already mentioned, you can only be involved in this warm and welcoming character of life when you've known the warmth and welcome of God in the gospel okay. of Jesus Christ. It's just you've got no engagement with this at all. It's only as go back to verse three, these things flow into our lives. And it's a beautiful thing when we see these things flow. We can enjoy the life of God together as a church. And as Paul has set these things up, you see, Paul is, is going to want to encourage, later in the letter, Philemon to welcome back Anesimus, who's his servant, who's gone and uh, run away, most likely stolen some of Philemon's goods. And he wants him to welcome him back with this embrace of love. And as we thought about all these things this morning, really, these things are ultimately a reflection of who God is. God is a warm and welcoming and sharing God. That is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's existed throughout eternity with this beautiful, warm relationship. And as Christians, we enter into that 
and we should be wanting to share that between ourselves in a similar way to which the Father, Son and Holy Spirit do. And we would want to see others welcomed into that to enjoy this beautiful, warm relationship which comes from our God. Let's be honest, finally, when it comes down to it, the world may offer stuff like this, but it can't deliver. Can't deliver because it doesn't have connection with the source. And so we live in a broken, fall, rejecting world, largely. That's where the church should be so different. That's why it's beautiful to see people from different races and backgrounds coming together in this church. But we need to go on more and more being built up and enjoying uh, this relationship with our God so that we can be those who are a people who are warm and welcoming. Mm. Let's pray. Father, help us in these things this day, we pray, that we might not be just hearers only, but doers and willing to the name of your own holy self embrace all of the people of god to love according to your love sourced in yourself through jesus christ that we might be enabled to go on from strength to strength bigger better for our god enable us and help us to that end we do pray in our lord jesus name amen, amen.